Good morning to all. Good morning to y'all. Welcome to the newest, latest edition of Wake and Pat. On a Wednesday hump day for you freaks out there. And uh, we're going to talk about the president, right? Not Mr. Vice President, a known follower of this channel. Not Joe Biden either, but we're talking about the president. Mark Murphy speaks for a little bit. Yesterday, all the meetings we know. So uh, this was one of the rare times we get to talk to the man or hear from the man. So we're coming to see where his mindset is. Good morning, Brandy. Shout out to Brandy Lewis. Good morning to everybody out there. Give y'all a little time. Give y'all a little time to get up in here. Uh, I'll go ahead and take my first hit. But yeah, man, um, you know, the meetings, uh, Mark Murphy was there. Obviously, Gutekinds is there. Matt LaFleur is there. Everybody's there. We actually heard from uh, Matt LaFleur yesterday, too. So we heard from Matt LaFleur yesterday, too. Uh, but uh, we'll probably get into that another another day or probably tomorrow or something. But um, yeah, um, that's a word that could mean a lot and it, can't mean, and it can mean a little bit. Right. Because, uh, man, there's many a times where shit, people have leverage in a fight. People have leverage in negotiations. People have leverage in certain wars and shit. And then all you know, shit gets flipped over. Right. What Mike Tyson say, everybody has a plan until what? Till you get punched in the face. So, you know, Tyson might have leverage in a few of his uh, fights that he had. But then somebody ended up knocking him out. So that is a tricky word. But I mean, it's a good thing, right? Good problem to have. They're saying we have leverage. I don't know exactly what you're referring to, Brandy, but I'm sure it's about draft and just our position that we are in right now. But uh, yeah, bro. So, you know, we got leverage. But um, back to Mark Murphy. You know, um, I had to educate myself a little bit, you know, because uh, I know he looks a little funny looking. You know, there's been, you know, jokes and stuff about how he looks. He looks like a goofball. He looks goofy. But uh, that cannot be furthest from the truth. And uh, we ain't even going to get into that right now. We're going to get into what the man did in football, man. Uh, he won Super Bowl 17 with the Redskins. He played eight seasons. Uh, he went to two Super Bowls. 6'4", um, 210. Like, you know, playing safety, too. Like, why didn't nobody tell me about Mark Murphy? Um, and uh, what's the stat he did? Um, oh, 1983, he led the league in interceptions. Not only did he lead the league in interceptions, but he got an all-pro. We talk about Mike Mark Murphy here. Oh, yeah, well, that will be talked about, too. Um, the mayor actually called him two weeks ago the mayor and and you know he seized all negotiations i mean you know again this could be a game of chicken shit you know what i'm saying and then this kind of stuff we don't need to be involved in this kind of stuff we just gotta wait and see normally they get shit done at the 13th hour or however the saying goes so yeah i heard there is trouble in paradise as far as not the lamb. We shouldn't be worried about no Lambo leaps, y'all. No Lambo leaps. We need to worry about. We need to worry about the Lambo lease. We need to get a new lease at Lambo, man. And clearly, like this thing has gone on forever, and it stayed. It stood on its own feet for so long as a establishment, as an organization, as a, a football program. That you know, why change certain shit now, man? But again, those negotiations will happen. Ain't nothing me, you, or anybody else could do about it. So all we got to do is really pray. But again, you got to think. You got to think something's going to get worked out because Green Bay is about to be a melting pot. Okay. He also talked about the draft that we will be hosting in 2025, and they're preparing for that. So, uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see uh, again. Upgrades for the draft next year were put on hold. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, you know. The draft is coming. You know, sometimes people need to see. The city needs to see. I don't know. Sometimes people get archaic. Some people just, you know, sports is not always, even though it's Green Bay, and that should be anything that's talked about or even eat, sleep, and shitted about is football, especially in the 
great state of Wisconsin and city of Green Bay. But not everybody has the same, uh, you know, mindset about that. Hey, I'm football first before anything, even before real life shit. Why? Because it's a distraction. It can bring people together. It does bring people together from all races, all kind of back uh, backgrounds, all kind of, you know, all that. So he said up to around 250,000 people, sh you know, should be coming to Green Bay. Uh, that seems like a lot to me. I don't know if he meant exactly, but for the draft, I mean, it is a lot of motherfuckers, right? But uh, I don't know what he meant by that. That's a lot of people. I mean, I'm sure it'd be dozens of thousands but that many i don't know but again that coming to green bay would be a help also just to show a little shine on the city just to show that they could do things that other cities can do too for crying out loud it's being in detroit this year so i mean if they could do some shit, we definitely can i think uh it's a okay rule but i think it all should be subjective brandy just like i say with drivers bro you got some motherfuckers over here that's like 70, 80 driving, looking like this and, and, and damn near getting in wrecks like over here. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not age shaming with anybody. Each individual, you know, run your race at your pace. Again, some people can do it longer than others. But I just think that the testing and at a certain age, they need to go through a little more testing for these older drivers. So if I'm able to say that, you know, I don't want to put an age on a driver because, again, Rest in peace, grandpa. Not it ain't got nothing to do with driving, but he was 70, riding a bike and running and in better shape than me. So who am I to say that he can't do this, that, or a third? I think it is all individual. Yes, it takes more work. You know, a blanket statement, just say, Oh, once you get this age, you can't drive anymore. I don't think that'd be fair. But it should be looked at. But you got some dudes that are just still bright at 70, 80, 90. So again, uh, it's cool, I guess, to have a limit, but uh, I don't agree. I think you know it should be uh, based upon the individual uh talking about this last year he said we actually did exceed expectations um and he said the expectations were lower than normal so uh i understood that everybody understood that so again we should appreciate how quick this thing turned around i was fully preparing with no issue no problem fully preparing for two seasons of just mediocrity you know what i'm saying and it seems like we're not even going to do that so i'm happy about that okay um and the thing is too mark murphy said that we're not even asking for money about this whole deal so something's going to get done but uh it is uh discouraging that the uh it is discouraging you know what i'm saying that the mayor would call and cease all talks like dude what what is, what is your deal you feel me so clearly, Brandy seen the interview that I that I seen because uh she's on topic about everything. That's why we love Brandy Lewis. She on her shit. Y'all watch out for her. But yeah, uh Packers in Brazil. Uh I'll just tell you my issue with it. I don't know if it'll be an issue anymore with the extra game, but it was always said to me that we would lose a home game at Lambo in order to travel abroad or wherever the hell else we're going to another country, right? So that'll be my only gripe with that, but it is what it is. And uh he said. The really issue with that was the runways in Green Bay not being big enough or, you know, planes needing they need a, a big enough plane to come through and, you know, work the logistics of that shit. He said that would probably be the, the, the closest problem. So 50 50 chance. That's a nice chance. And yeah, why not? You know, I'm sure there's motherfucking Packer fans in Brazil. And why not show off how far we can stretch? how far this Packer love reaches, bro. You know, we got people all over the place loving the Packers. So I would never, uh, I would never want to, you know, take away an opportunity once in a lifetime opportunity for them to see the Packers. That's worth me losing the Lambo game. Although like, it ain't like I'm gonna be at the game anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I was never, uh, you know, mad at us not going, you know, because again, I'm like, oh, well, they they taking a home game. I'd rather have a home game at Lambo. That could be an extra victory. Victory that could be the difference. Y'all seeing how we looked when we played uh, against the Jets or wherever the fuck we was. You know, we didn't play good anyway. But uh, yeah, man, uh, let 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 us uh, you know, let us let that G shine, bro, everywhere. So I'm I'm all with that. I'm all for that. So as far as Brian, I mean Brian, I was about to say Gudikins. As far as Mark Murphy, you know, again, he looks a little goofy. Got the gap. 
hey, hell of a player, right? But uh, dude, uh, pretty smart, you know, got a master's degree in business. I mean, they don't just hand those out. Um, he was a uh, what's the shit called? Uh, he was a trial lawyer of the Department of Justice for a little while. He also was a uh, what else did the fuck he did? Uh, he got the big oh uh business doctrine i don't know what the i mean uh, uh whatever bro he got i, I forgot I, I just had it all in my brain i know he got a doctorate and he got a fucking master's dude so dude is smart god damn it uh that's just them just being you know you know how it goes some people right it's kind of like marriage right you're supposed to go through the whole thing and not have sex until you're married. But, you know, there was a quote I heard a, a chick say. She was like, well, I got to test drive the car before I marry it. So, man, you you love him to death do his part and you married him. He just can't get it up in bed or he just can't do what he need to do. So they were just trying to prevent that, uh, you know, but that's kind of cheesy to me. It's like, dude, make the rule. And then that's the rule. Now, four years, what it's going to be, right? It's going to be four years. And, uh, you know, just hope that it's a year of Keyshawn Nixon uh, breaking more records. Keyshawn Nixon getting his third um, all pro returning in a row because they said it's going to go something crazy from like 20 percent return rate that we had this past whatever many years to now is going to be an 80 percent return rate. That is a big difference, man. Shout out to Big Nate, man, in the house. Just talking about our uh, our president, man. You know, our president, uh, Mark Murphy, how he's feeling. Uh, he did say the draft otherwise is going well. Uh, you just getting off uh, after this. I shall be heading in. You know how I go. Um, so he was a safety. He did lead the league in interceptions 1984. He did get an all pro. So they asked him about Xavier McKinney. And uh, he mentioned his age. He's at the right age. Prime years right ahead of him. Uh, his creativity on the defense, just creativity of causing turnovers, right? Not just getting interceptions. This guy got, I have seen the play where he knocked the ball out. You know, it was a knockout. And then somebody else caught the interception. So, you know, uh, just his way of uh, creating turnovers and his leadership. That's what Mark Murphy said about Xavier McKinney. And speaking about X. He says, we're also going to have an X on our back. So we are not this Packer team that I've been mentioning. I've been saying that's just going to sneak up on people now. Jordan Love has another interview out there, which I'll check out today. I don't even know the platform, but again, they eating this Jordan Love thing up and he's eating it up. He's working hard at the same time. And that is another question they asked to uh, Mark Murphy it was about Jay Love. And he said he's ready. He said he's a leader and he's the quarterback of the future and he's excited to see what he's going to do. And he's just really impressed from the way he handled every single situation, similar to what LaFleur said yesterday, but we will get in what to, into what LaFleur said uh, probably tomorrow. But yeah, man, uh, kick rules. He likes them. We're talking about Murphy. Uh, Brazil, the runaway in Green Bay seems to be the only thing holding back, which the, they, I'm sure they could figure that out. You could get a plane big enough to go there, but then let's not, Let's not be dangerous with it, though. Don't don't put too much luggage on it. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's make sure we could do this the right way. But it is hey, traveling all the way there. That that that's a, a what do you say? A 12 hour flight. He just wants it to be one flight. So if that's possible, then the Packers shall be in Brazil, which would be great for us, man. I would love to take a trip out there. He was also the athletic director at Colgate his alma mater. So anybody thinking that this dude, you know, well, you know, clearly his time is uh, almost up, but you know, anybody was questioning his, you know, just anything about him. I mean, he's a bright guy, bro. And, you know, he was very integral in hiring Matt LaFleur, man. Uh, I like it all, Brandy. I like it all. And that's just me being a, a selfish fan, right? Normally, you know, sometimes I work, but normally a motherfucker is off on Christmas and ain't nothing better than eating a good meal, watching some football. You know, uh, I'm sure the players are opposed to it. Some of them wants to be with their family. They're already away from their family for a long amount of time. But again, it's only a select few people playing on Christmas. So, you know, 
they gonna have to live with it. They get paid, they get compensated well for it. I'm sure not every athlete likes to be playing on Christmas and shit like that, but hey, it's another check. You know, national TV, they ain't gonna miss out on that money. So yeah, it ain't going anywhere. So I guess we gotta learn to love it. Definitely. We definitely did. Remember the days, again, this year, it didn't matter anyway, because I do what I do. I find my ways to find the Packers games. But, um, yeah, uh, remember, man, the, the complicated fella days, it seemed like we was on TV every other week. We got a Monday night. We got a Sunday night. We got a Thursday night. We got all that. And we still got all that with J-Love. You know, I think J-Love's clout and just the don't know what the fuck he's going to do factor about him had us on TV a lot more than often. I'm sure we even got flexed into a TV situation. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, that's how I go. You know, it takes a little time to, 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 to build up steam and shit like that. Watch your ass, boy. He got a knife in his back pocket. What you gonna do with that? Anyway, just homeless uh, digging in the trash, but bro got a damn near machete in his back pocket. Like, what you doing with that? Anyway, oh uh, yeah, so there will be an X on our back. Hopefully, that means that we will, like Brandy mentioned, get us a few more of these premium games, and uh, you know, we shall. There should be storylines everywhere. Um, you know, you know, us in San Francisco are gonna be on on. You know, that might be a opening week deal with them you know or it might be san francisco detroit i don't know but you know they're gonna we're gonna be in a mix man we're definitely gonna be in a mix with a lot of stuff so uh yeah man got to get the lambo lease together kick rules uh you know um draft 2025 j love is ready we exceeded expectations uh he ain't asking for money from the mayor so the mayor can't say like, oh, we, you know, it ain't nothing about the money. They ain't asking for money. We make our own money. And he said, we are not even asking the community for money. So, you know, this shit going to get figured out, you know, nothing to worry about. Let the higher ups deal with that kind of shit. And then again, even if they get it done at the 12th hour or whatever it is, just let them get it done. Okay. So, uh, yeah, man, that's all what uh, Murphy talked about, though. It was a, a short interview, uh, him and Larry McCarron, I seen and uh, McCarron himself two-time all pro center man we got some guys bro we got some guys man i didn't know mark murphy was balling like that all pro six four two ten playing safety that's a linebacker playing safety so he know a little bit about the position and he knows a little bit about football so again a motherfucker could look like a dummy but i told y'all this before before we even mentioned mark murphy i didn't uh shout out to the homie ernie martinez man definitely definitely hey it gets no better than that the, the dolphins are attract me you know that's really going to test us and and also brandy it just really depends on when these matchups do happen you know like people just think the schedule coming out oh we've seen our schedule we're seeing we're gonna play let's just x off this x off that no we don't know how many road games we're gonna get in a row we don't know what consecutive opponents we're gonna face like you know it's gonna it's gonna be a, a good mixed bag but uh you know again brandy like which i don't understand everybody screaming jumping up and down oh you guys had an easy schedule last year when they made this shit, it wasn't easy bro whenever they make the schedule they don't even know who the teams is or what they're gonna do bro so it's god forbid we just play every team in front of us that they schedule for us bro i done heard talking about some we had an easy schedule was it easy to go to dallas in the playoffs and beat them well, yeah, it was for us. Was it easy to go to the next round and almost beat San Francisco? You know what I'm saying? So I don't know about that easy schedule shit. Oh, yeah, that's the first two. The first two things I ever do on the, on the calendar. Womp, womp, X them out. You know what I'm saying? Although that totally goes against my theory. You know, now that shows how horrible and how the Bears still suck and how they will always suck. But, you know, my theory of everybody, as soon as the schedule comes out, they're just going, oh, win, 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 win. I said, be careful with doing that. But no, Brandy, we can definitely X off both Bears games with no issues and a guarantee one Vikings game and a guarantee one uh, Detroit game. But things have changed this year. I'm going for the full sweep. Call me crazy. OK, Detroit want to get us one time. OK, probably. But 
we sweep in Minnesota and we sweep in Chicago. So I don't want to fucking hear it. You know what I'm saying? So this going to turn into the days of New England making Super Bowls because all they had to do was beat the Jets twice, Dolphins twice, and Bills twice, and half of their job is done. Then they just got to win, what, two more games? Feel me? So. Uh, and then again, I just think that's team specific at what's going on with that team at that time. Some motherfuckers start 0-3. They need to sit the fuck down week four for a bye week and, and re recalibrate and, and get shit together. Some motherfuckers don't get a bye week to week eight. They go 8-0. Then the bye week come and slow them down. You know, hey, it can happen. It's just, you know, we just play the cards. We dealt whatever they give to us. You know what I'm saying? As a player, you know, you'll kind of like it toward the middle before you get too burnt out. You know what I'm saying? And it's like a mid-season kind of just break. You know what I'm saying? That week does a lot for these these athletes, for sure. I'm sure a week off for anybody, just like spring break now. I'm sure y'all motherfuckers is happy, right? So, uh, yeah, it just depends, man. It depends. Hey, the, the team, hey, we caught a few injuries. The bye week is in two weeks. Okay, that's good. It depends on the situation. A bye could hurt or help somebody wherever it is. that exactly exactly so you know uh it seems like our buys have been pretty early throughout the years right so uh you know how about a late one this time you know how about a late one um you know that you know we'll see but i ain't even i ain't even tripping off of that i i ain't tripping off of the buy uh there's nothing we could do about it so but yeah sometimes it comes at the right time for some team sometimes it comes at the wrong time shit you know hey andy reed bill belichick even LaFleur, you know, records after a bye is pretty good. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, it all depends. Like I said, it's all subjective, y'all. It's all subjective. Um, so, yeah, man, that's what's going on in Packerland on a Wednesday where there's no game on a Sunday. You know, just had to come through, chit-chat with y'all. You know, not all of these are going to go for an hour. I'll be trying to stop it at 30 minutes every time. But uh, I've said what I needed to say. I've gotten a good feedback from y'all yes that is something from his game that he can learn from wicks i'm sure this shit wicks can learn from romeo i'm sure that see that's why you know if we had talk let's talk about our receiving core real quick if we had everybody doing the same thing it'd just be like okay who we gonna keep who we not gonna keep but all of our guys play totally different and that's a good thing because it's going to cause a matchup nightmare, number one. And it's also a good thing because guys can really learn from the other guys. Like Wick's route running is probably better than everybody on the team. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure Romeo will want to get some pointers with that. You know, I feel Romeo has the best torque, like with his body, to put his body in situations to catch difficult catches, right? You know, he got that kind of, you know, wiggle in him that he can do it. We've seen him do it before. Christian Watson, you already know gadget player slash home run hitter same thing for Jaden reed to a lesser degree gadget player slash home run hitter we've seen Jaden reed catch and or run a ball for 40 yards for a touchdown you know what i'm saying we've seen christian watson do the same but then again when it comes to them two totally different we got a 6-4 and a 5-11 right it's like so all of our receivers do something totally different which i think they can learn from each other's games or they can just continue on you know what i'm saying there's more than one way to beat your guy in front of you. Christian Watson might use his speed, zoom, go past him. Wicks might use his release. And Romeo might use his route running, you know? What I meant was Wicks' release is way better than Romeo's release. But their route running is pretty, you know, on the same level. Romeo could run some good routes and consistent routes. But the, the Wicks got everybody on a release, bro. You don't get that open like he was getting open like this year, bro. So many times I'm like, who the fuck is this Wicks dude? Like when he got in, I'm like, okay, we might have to play him. And then every week it's like, okay, we might have to play him. Dude is a baller. Dude is a baller. And you guys are football nerds such as myself. Go and look at his fucking film. Not only look at his film, but look at him working out and running routes, bro. He's uh he's on another level. He's on another level about it. I, I don't want to say that, Brandy, because, you know, it is hella early, but you goddamn right. His his release rivals motherfucking um, 
Devontae's. And I mean, rivals in a good way, like, you know, especially at this point in his career, Devontae was not here where Wicks is with his release that Devontae ended up getting to. So that's another scary thing. Wicks is just beginning this shit. So it's about to be a problem. Again, dude just was not running open so many times, getting 100 yard games, touchdowns, whatever, long touchdown catches. Uh, Like he wasn't just doing that for no reason. Bro was getting open because right off the line. Ah. <laughs> Receiver think he going another way, he go another way. And when they try to jam him, Wicks, his hand game is cool. I don't know if he do MMA, but his little, you know, wax on, wax off. Whenever they try to press, he not only he do he get him with the release, but he'd get him with his hands too. Physical guy. Perfectly said, exactly, Brandy. When they get up on him, and man, fucking good luck. You need to zone this dude up. Hopefully he crosses your face in the zone and you could get there. But if you're right in front of him, especially pressing him with his release and his handwork at the line, you're cooked. You are cooked. And again, Jaden Reed, uh, a little bit of everybody in him, right? He got a little bit of Watson of uh, being that gadget player who could take the sweeps and do this and that. He got a little bit of Romeo with the route running. And his release, clearly it ain't on Wick's level, but he got a decent release too. And look, at his height, probably the shortest receiver we do have, his 50-50 balls percentage is better than everybody else's. You would think Christian Watson, a whole 6'4", his 50-50 balls opportunities, you thought you would think he's doing it. But Jaden Reed leads in that. So, again, everybody brings something different to the table. I hope they are on that jugs machine all fucking offseason. I, I swear. didn't? Don't you guys remember, like, six, seven years ago, we watching Nelson, Cobb, Jennings, like, I seen so much jug machine in my life. I have not seen the machine. Do they still even use it in Green Bay? You know, I argued that we should use it more because some of the passes Romeo used to drop. He used to catch it and on the way down, it'll just wiggle out. Like, nah, bro, you gotta that jug machine teaches you how to grip it and and, and hold that bitch tight. Uh, well, he's only going to be in there. You're not, Brandy, because it is a need. But, you know, again, he's not. He's only going to be in there. I don't know the percentage. What, 20 to 25 to 30? Probably 30 percent of the time. Probably 30 percent of the time. So, I mean, you still need a guy. But then that's why we need somebody versatile. You know, if he's not doing that, that's why, again, he said, uh, who said, who said, did Matt say it? Who did we just hear from? They said it's going, oh, oh, Goot said it. I interchangeable. Interchangeable. Hey, Duff, McDuffie might be in the middle at this time. He might play the weak whenever we use that. He might play the right. He might play the left. Quay might be in the right. Quay might be in the middle of that time. But, uh, yeah, the third one, uh, you know, he ain't going to be in there as much. Well, you know, we're going to be in nickel. Shout out to Percy Haskell, man. You know, uh. Welcome to 420 HPOV Boulevard, man. Hey, when you come over here, bro, just, hey, wipe your feet at the door. Hit the like button on your way in. If not, hit it on your way out. Uh, You know, we we a cool little community here, bro. And we talk about Packers every goddamn day. And uh, I must uh agree with you, bro. Hey, we get one guy in there, like McDuffie. We love him. Okay, right? Great player, not great. Good player, you know, good at reading defenses. He's a he's a football player. He's a tackler, you know, and he does his thing. But to say that he's the end-all be-all at linebacker and that we can't get better than that, Quay, if we could get another Quay, right? Not even that. We need somebody more cerebral than Quay. Quay, hey, Quay play with his hairs on fire and just let him go. That's how we need to let him play. McDuffie, he seemed more like, okay, I'm going to know what's coming. You see McDuffie already creeping and running towards the way where he thinks the ball is going to go. And more times than not, he stops the play. Yes, that's why that is so important. Uh, and that's kind of, um, McKinney did that. Hello, McKinney did that in uh, college. He played, he definitely played some linebacker in college, Brandy. So he's going to be doing a little bit of that. We're probably going to get the same deal in the draft, a safety slash linebacker hybrid. You know what I'm saying? And then not just... Not a legit linebacker. Like Sam McKinney played linebacker. It's not, not like he was ever in the depth chart as a linebacker. But, you know, in certain sets, like, he would be the sub linebacker. And, again, like Goot said, sub is going to be become more of the norm. And the base is going to be become more of the sub. If you guys get that. If you know football, if you get that. 
You know, base is what we normally, all right, this is our base. We in it throughout the game. We'll make changes wherever. Sub is like when you need to pull in more guys because the offense is getting freaky. Nowadays, every offense tries to get freaky. You see five wide out there with empty. You see gun bunch. You see trips. Like, you see all kind of crazy shit. So we need to have an extra guy back there. That's why, it, again, it's going to be more of the norm for us to be in the nickel. And, again, for them to have that much confidence in Keyshawn Nixon, it was only his first year, people. It was only his first year, y'all. Does he not deserve a chance? Not only was it only his first year, but it was under Joe Barry. So that is hindering him just just off top, okay? So uh, we need to pop, pop, pump the brakes a little bit on Keyshawn. I know he did get burnt, right? He got burnt a lot of times. But then at the end of the day, who would you want to get burnt on our defense? It would have to be him. I don't need Jair getting burnt. When he's playing, I don't want Co Valentine and Valentine getting burnt. If they were getting burnt, that would show that we have uh, failed that investment in our second or third corners or third and fourth corners. That's what Valentine and Valentine is supposed to be a third and fourth corner. We supposed to have Stokes, Jair, you know, they supposed to be holding it down. Yeah, and they will. Again, it will be interchangeable, Brandy. So not only is Nixon going to be there, sometimes I still don't think he's going to just be like the starting, starting deal. Again, it depends on how the draft falls. You know, they're going to get somebody to pair up with Nixon. They're going to get somebody to pair up with McKinney. That's what I think he means, interchangeable. McKinney might be the one high safety, one play. He might be the post safety roaming and doing what he does on another play. You know, we might run four, two, five. We might run 44. You know what I'm saying? It's probably going to be a lot more 425. So it's only going to have, you're only going to have McDuffie and, 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 uh, and Quay in there for, you know, majority part of the time, part of the time, unless we just really get a guy who just excels so good at that, you know, weak side linebacker or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Well, Brandy, uh, and, and Sean Ryan, we trust. I trust Sean Ryan. Listen. Even if Runyon would have came back, you would have felt the same way, right, Brandy? Runyon wouldn't have fixed these issues. And I would say that uh, it is questionable if Ryan is better than Runyon. I think we got to give Ryan the full plate. He came in, uh, you know, later in the season, switching roles with uh, Runyon. You know, I'm glad he got that under his belt. He did get bigger. When I seen him, I'm like, damn, I don't remember him like this in training camp. He was a little slender. Boy, he was eating. Hey, he was eating, bro. And that's a good thing. So I think, you know, I think Sean Ryan might be something. Shout out to Percy again, bro. I'm still, again, I, you know, thing you all know about Brian Gutekinds is that he's going to exercise every option he has with his picks. With his picks, okay? So I think Josh Myers, they're going to they let him do it. I think his contract is up, but again, let's not forget. He can also play guard. He can also play guard. We, we didn't have Elton at tackle. We didn't have Elton at guard. We didn't have Elton at center. We didn't have Zach Tom at tackle, Zach Tom at guard, Zach Tom at center. So believe me, in this draft, we should get two, not two, probably three offensive linemen. One's going to be a solid tackle, I think, and then we're going to get two swing guys, a guy who can play guard or center and a guy who can play guard or tackle. That's just how we've been doing it, and we've been ex selling at it one thing we can't question you could question our our, our uh drafting corners if you want but you can't question us drafting linemen bro we are a lineman factory bro and a wide receiver factory where we don't have to use first round picks on linemen or wide receivers what was david bakhtiari the best ta left tackle of history what was he a third fourth rounder hey like you know yes uh he did get re-signed i don't know the details of it but he did get re-signed uh for sure Hey, shout out to my hey, shout out to my folks, man. Hey, long long time. Uh hey, good to see you, miscellaneous. What's up with you? Oh, I had to pick that one. I had to pick that one. I'm searching. I'm like, what which you know, I was gonna do the suit and tie, Mark Murphy, the the one that everybody's familiar with, but y'all had to know that this motherfucker was a dog before, okay? He wasn't no joke. 6'4, 210, 1984 led the league in interceptions, got an all pro. Our Mark Murphy, our president. You know, some people look at, look at his dumb ass. He looks like a goofball. Well, this goofball hired Matt LaFleur, so he's seen something in him. 
Yeah, he was placed on it, but Brandy, I did hear the news that we signed him back or whatever. I don't know, like, if he's just going to recover from the injury. There's not going to be an injury kind of deal with it, but I did hear we signed Rudy Ford, which I will do my further due diligence after the stream. Shout out to my boy, Dark Gable. Uh, don't know nothing about him. But what position is he? Graham Barton. Sound like a lineman. Yeah, Ernie, but I do think, uh, Ernie, I do think that we, uh, you know, we sign them, though. Uh, yeah, that's all that means, the swap swapping people around. I mean, but again, we got swappers. Like, Kenny Clark can play end, and he can play tackle. Brooks can play end, and he can play tackle. Again, like, there is no like blueprint right just like they did ask goop they like okay normally in this defense you have like you know smaller kind of linebackers on the outside more athletic and goop was like well i like them bigger you know what i'm saying and that's fine like you, there's more than one way to skin a cat but it's just gonna be a little swapping around that's all it's gonna be again that's why you got to get athletes that's why you got to get football players kenny clark is not just the kenny clark we've seen for eight years we've been we've seen the kenny clark that they're asking him to do i'm sure just like a, in an aaron donald role to a lesser degree they can ask kenny clark to do that line up on a strong side and just be that post safety on the d line you don't know where he's going to line up at you don't know where he's going to be at he might be a tackle here he might be a here you know he might be over directly over the nose yeah and i'm not a hey i hey i wanted rudy you know, Rudy actually led the team in interceptions last year, which is a shame. He only had two, but he was the team leader, people. Ain't that a bitch? Okay, hey, Dark Gable, I'm all for that. And actually, around this time, y'all, I am all for uh I'm all for drafting the lineman, bro. At first, I'm like, ah, safety first, no matter what. But I'll get a safety in the second round. And again, 91 picks. We got five of the first 91. You know, five of the first 91. Um, You talking about offensive line or defensive line, Brandy? Because the offensive line, I would say it was the interior. You know, center in that right guard position is where, you know, we had some issues that we remember uh, Chris Jones having his way. We remember, you know, we always have a little issue with the top D tackles in the league. Okay. Yeah. Hey, a Texas linebacker uh, uh, sounds good. Okay. Defense. Um. I mean, that was an issue, but I honestly think like it was just a lot of issues. <laughs> Seriously, it was a lot of issues. Uh, we can't say exactly the edge deal because Preston is one of the most you know consistent and best at sealing the edge. So. But again, they still got out there at certain certain point in times, you know, but you can't say nothing about Zach Tom, the job he did. Uh, even in the, in a the running game, I know I flipped back to offense, but, uh, you know, uh, Rashawn has a bit. He doesn't seal the edge. He over pursues the edge. So I really think Rashawn could really hope and just work with Preston on how to just, you know, you could play with your hair on fire, but sometimes you got to stay in your lane, just like just like a corner. Hey, Stokes, we know you're one of the fastest corners out there, but sometimes you, you could be too fast. Slow that shit down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but uh, let's be real. Like, when the last time we really had a, a mauling, you know, offensive line for the run? We do just good enough for the run, and our pass and play action is always so good that the run does good. And we normally have good athletes as a running back, Amon Green, Ryan Grant, Aaron Jones, you know, I think we always ran the ball in spite of, you know, we got great pass protection uh, linemen, Bakhtiari, even like Zach Tom now, Rasheed Walker, like those guys can pass block. Elton could be a mauler. Josh Myers could be a mauler. You a whole 6'5", 300 plus out there, but he's just a nice kid. I really think somebody needs to slap his mom before the game or slap him. Like, if you could get it out of him, he's athletic. Me me and Brandy have talked about Myers, some, some of the games that he had this year. Like, man, Josh was getting physical. Josh was doing his thing, swinging out, looking for, hey, 
He's sitting there blocking. Nobody's in front of him. Nobody's coming. All of his people have their blocks contained. This motherfucker rolled out with the quarterback as a lead blocker, bro. Like, he did that a couple times. So, again, I'm still just giving hope. Great Packer Mike Wall admitted. He said, honestly, I didn't get good until my fourth year. So, that's around the time we're about to be with, with Myers. And, uh, again, he got, bro, 6'5", Esther, looking like that. You know, and the athletic ability he has, I just think he needs a little more nasty in him. He really needs something needs to, I don't mean nothing bad happened to him, but he needs a little, you know, a little rage in him. That's all I say. Nah, he'll be there, you know, in a pinch sometimes. Now, very slept on a game I went to, Los Angeles, you know, when it was still at the Coliseum, when Jair ate motherfucking uh brandon cooks for lunch that's when brandon cooks played for the rams obviously he was a slot and that was jair's coming out party and he was guarding a slot all that game but for a guy that talented you want him as the shutdown corner on the outside you know so but yeah he's definitely capable of doing it but then again i mean jair is just jair uh, at this point we can say sorry to say we can say that he's injury prone so it, it don't matter where we put that nigga at he might just get hurt I hope so. Yeah, he'll be, you know, again, that's why Hey, post safety. Yeah, that's Xavier McKinney. But don't be surprised if Jair play that role a little bit, seriously. Or Cooper Dijon, if we end up getting him playing that role a little bit. Hey, what you have to pay attention to is interchangeable. Just like Goose, he said, I don't want nobody thinking it's going to be a, just a carbon copy or this is what this player does and this is what this player does. He said it's interchangeable. Different times of the game, different times of the year situationally you can have all right quay you in the middle this time all right isaiah you outside oh, oh isaiah this game we need you in the middle we're gonna have quay rushing up you never know that's why you gotta have athletes that do different kind of things we should be able to i wouldn't say two brandy i think that is asking for too much but you know nobody has a two tight end two-headed monster like we do but you know most of the teams got one tight end but uh, you know, Baltimore, Isaiah likely in uh their stud, they got that. Uh, you know, so there's a couple of tight end tandems out there, but no, uh Xavier should erase a lot of that. He should erase a lot of that. So uh yeah, but uh all right, I'm about to get up out of here, man. Thank you everybody for coming through. I appreciate it. Shout out to Brandy Lewis, shout out to my boy Dark Gable. Hey, if I forgot about you, I didn't forget about you. Um Shout out to Ernie Martinez, of course. Shout out to my boy, Miscellaneous, man. Good to see you. Percy Haskell, welcome to the family, man. Well, welcome to the stream, man. Uh, glad to hear your opinions. Um, we, again, we talk Packers every day, man, no matter what. Ernie Martinez again. Shout out to Big Nate, Packer fans with swagger. Shout out to the whole fam over there, man. And uh, I'm getting out of here, though. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Waking Pack tomorrow morning.